All right, you may start whenever you'd like. Okay, great. Well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Lauren Bradley. I'm a discovery and electronic resources librarian at SUNY Maritime College. Welcome to refreshing the library scavenger hunt with free tech tools. So just a quick recap of what we'll go over in this session is I'll tell you a little bit about the origin and context of this project. And then we're actually gonna start with a demo that is this exact activity that we gave, but catered to this particular audience. Um, so you can all get a real taste of how this worked with students. Uh, I'll go over the tools that I used to make it. We'll go over the LEAD 101 version of this activity, and then I'll cover challenges and lessons learned. So for the demo, you will need a smartphone or a tablet to participate. So if you have one, uh, you can go ahead and pull that out. So this class is LEAD 101. It's basically a freshman seminar class required for every first semester student. So, you know, similar to like an FYE class. Prior to the pandemic, the LEAD 101 classes would come into the library for a library scavenger hunt. And the pandemic really disrupted that. So in 2020, there was no scavenger hunt. Um, in 2021, the classes came back to the library, but had a more kind of like traditional presentation because of, you know, social distancing and those kind of concerns. Um, but we found is what was happening was students were making comments like, I didn't know the library had a second floor, or I didn't know we had group study rooms or, you know, different services and spaces were available to them. So we wanted to return to a library orientation and we thought a scavenger hunt was a good activity to, to engage them. Um, also happening, we already are short staffed and then we lost two librarians uh, right before the semester started. Um, we also lost some of our student worker funding. So we had been hoping to have student workers help with this. And then that became quickly apparent that that may not be an option. Um, the previous scavenger hunt had been really labor intensive and required two people to facilitate. So I wanted to make sure that this activity, you know, could be done by one person and maybe even one person who was juggling multiple responsibilities if there was like a call out or, you know, COVID outbreak or, you know, quarantining and things like that. Uh, the other thing that kind of informed this project was the administration made it very clear that retention was the theme for the year. And we were directed that all departments were expected to help create positive student engagement experiences on campus. So with all of this kind of informing, you know, uh, the activity, it was a good opportunity for a redesign. So, what we're going to do is we're going to, you're going to get a taste of this activity yourself. So you can go ahead and take your phone or your tablet and point it at the uh, QR code. I'm also have put the uh, link in the chat just in case you're having scanning issues. And we're going to run our own scavenger hunt, but it's going to be office space. So if you scan this QR code, switch off for just a minute, you are going to see a Padlet that looks like this. So we are on five teams. Your team correlates to the type of college you are, community college, technology college, et cetera. You're going to click on the plus sign, and then you can add a photo either by taking, clicking on the camera option, right on the browser, or you can take pictures and then upload them. It's really up to you. It doesn't make a difference. But what we're searching for, I will go back. And we're gonna take like five minutes to do this. I don't actually expect anybody to <laughs> find all these activities unless you are really, really quick. So go ahead. If you're confused, put your questions in the chat and I'll try to direct you.
Okay, good. I'm seeing a lot of cute things. <laughs> cute notebooks, cute cups, cute. I don't know what this boba, it's just like a boba plushie. Love it. And great, and now we have players for all five types of colleges on the board. Got eight, eight from the community colleges. Fourteen from the technology colleges. Three from the doctoral colleges. Oh, they just added one. one two, two from the comprehensive. Ten from the university centers. Okay, I'm not actually keeping score, but I'm seeing good, good things. We'll we'll look at everything. And I'm monitoring questions or comments in the chat. Um, yes, the QR Dino. We will talk about that, and. Uh, Heather, yes, I, I think this is fun and students seem to think it was fun or, you know, as fun as like a educational in-class activity can be. Okay, we'll just take one more minute and then we can look at the board we got together. Yeah, and I know not everybody will have everything in their office. I tried to pick things that I thought what I did, I thought I figured at least everyone should have at least one of these in their office. Oops. Okay. So we'll look at our board together for those of you who are playing along. So yeah, it's it's fun. I like this tool because it updates in real time. It's very visual. Um you know, I, I think it's, it's especially for like a first year experience, like if this can be their first interaction with the library, um, it kind of just leaves like a positive taste in their mouth, horribly. Um, yeah, it's okay. I, and I should have said, these are our, uh, like kind of the SUNY categories. Um, I don't know if everybody is familiar with their SUNY categories and I know not everybody here is from a SUNY, but you know, just like take your take your best best guess. Okay, thanks for participating. Okay, so how did I make this activity? Um, I you know we did not have to invest any money into these tools. So I used Canva to create their uh, cards. Of course, they played in person, not digitally, but as you can see, you can even do a scavenger hunt remotely and digitally. Uh, Padlet is the software um, to do the board and then using the QR code maker from Google Park. So if you aren't familiar with Canva, I know a lot of people are familiar, have used it, but in case you're new to it, this is a kind of drag and drop uh, graphic design tool. I'm a big fan of it. I am not good at graphic design, but I feel like I'm good at tricking people into thinking I'm good at graphic design. 
um, my presentation I've made in Canva because it just looks really slick and like I'm amazing. Uh, but it's drag and drop. There's a free version and a paid version. I like this um, for for um, stuff like this. So I made the cards that the students were using in Canva. All these little graphics and things are just from the Elements tab. Um, Padlet is free with a premium option. I think the limitation is you can only have three Padlets at a time. Um, but they come in different formats. This one is the shelf. I think it's the only one that lets you label columns, uh, but there are other ones that could be used for a variety of activities. This canvas one is more like a mind map. Um, the map one is good if you're doing any kind of like geographic, GIS kind of based activity. Timeline can be really fun for like history. I am admittedly not a super... A uh, visual person, but you know, if you're really good at incorporating visual things into instruction, I think this is a great tool to use. And then you can just clear the contents and reuse it for the next group. And then this is a cool feature that I believe came out during the pandemic. There's lots of ways to make a QR code, um, but a free and very quick way to make it without having to sign into anything is if you open any URL in Google Chrome and then click on the share button at the end of the browser, there's a create QR code um, feature where you can download it as an image file, screenshot it, whatever. And it automatically puts that little dinosaur in the middle. It's like kind of the same dinosaur that comes up when their browser crashes. And I just think it's very cute. It is branded. The downside to using a QR code this way is, you know, you don't have access to any kind of metrics or analytics, but for an activity like this, you would have other metrics. And analytics. So when we ran this for LEAD 101, it really worked very, very similar to this, um, to uh, what we, the activity we just did. So this is what their scavenger hunt um, cards look like. There were five teams, each team was given a color and that was so it could be scalable. So if I had a class of 20, we could divide up into you know groups of three or so. If I had a class of 30, we could do a bigger class. Um, and I thought colors were very straightforward instead of trying to like divide it up other ways or numbers, I thought that was gonna get confusing. And then all of the cards had the same elements on them. They were just in a different order. So students would be at a different, um, different parts of the library at different times. Uh, the other great thing about this is we first met in a classroom in the library that has a smart board. So we put the Padlet up where they can see it. But behind our front desk, we also have a sign uh, for digital signage. So I was able to put this here and I would call it our leaderboard. That way too, I could stand at the front desk and kind of monitor uh, teams that were struggling to figure out the instructions or teams that were like maybe blowing the activity off and going around and, and telling them, you know, like, oh, blue team has three things up, red team has nothing. Red team, what's happening? Are we confused? Do we need help? Uh, giving them a thought, you know, feedback like that kind of instantaneously. Our students are also hyper competitive so even though there wasn't really like a winner or a prize, just the idea that, you know, it drove kind of like their natural competitiveness uh, and to, to, to get it done. I did tell them they couldn't run though, so I don't want them to be get hurt. So some challenges with this activity, and I, I think, you know, if you've worked with students for a long time, they might have jumped out to you already. Uh, the two biggest challenges, and I do think they go kind of hand in hand, are accessibility and device inequity. So, you know, if you are a student who has a mobility uh, disability or a disability related to like vision, low vision, things like that, this activity may not, you know, may be difficult for you. 
Um, our library also is not the most accessible space. It's in a 250 year old fort. There's a second floor that has no elevator or lift. So the library is not the most accessible space uh, to begin with. Uh, also, you need a smartphone to do this activity. Not everyone has a smartphone, even in 2022. We know this. So to kind of mitigate both of these, these considerations and to make it flexible and adaptable, that's why I went with like the team approach and I tried to make it so the teams had a minimum of three people on them. Um, because that way, if we did have somebody who had a mobility barrier, we could say, you know, let's make your team, like, let's give you roles. So maybe one person is more of a project manager, directing the other people and sending them out to take pictures. Um, if there was a device, you know, somebody doesn't have a smartphone and I didn't want to put anybody on the spot. So I told them, you know, you only need one device per team. If you forgot your phone today or it's dead, you just need one person to be the photographer. So that way students didn't feel like they had to self-identify as somebody who maybe didn't have a device. Um, neither of these solutions are perfect. And I'm definitely open to suggestions and feedbacks about how to make this activity multi you know, more accessible, accessible from a disability standpoint and an equity standpoint. Um, but we did want to get the students around the space since that was the main purpose of the, the activity. So the next set of problems were kind of more structural. So we are located in a 250 year old fort. It is made of granite. There are large sections of the library where there is no phone service. Um, something that surprised me that I wasn't expecting was even though the students were coming in in week five or six, there were students who had never connected to the school's Wi-Fi before. So we had to spend some time helping students kind of troubleshoot getting on Wi-Fi for the first time and occasionally would run into issues where, you know, somebody's like, Login isn't working, they forgot their password, they're locked out of their, you know, single sign-on account, um, kind of more like IT issues, uh, which I wasn't counting on encountering that issue, so it ate up time that I wasn't prepared for. Um, then, just very helpfully, one of the days that we had several classes coming, the Wi-Fi was down for the whole building. <laughs> Um, which was very frustrating for everyone involved. So we just had to be flexible and adaptable and, you know, told students take photos where you can. Um, when you get a pocket of service somewhere, upload it then. And if you really can't, just, just take the pictures and like show them to me at the end of the class and we can go over it together. Uh, the last set of problems were you know, not anything really to do with the activity uh, and more just to do with kind of like buy-in on library sessions in general. So some of the instructors didn't really understand that this was an activity that was going to take up their entire class period. They thought it was going to be like a five minute, you know, present, you know, presentation from the library and didn't understand, no, we're doing like a really engaging activity that's going to take up the majority of your class. Um, or some of the instructors didn't understand that their presence was required, um, not just suggested. So they sent their library, their class to the library with no instructor present or, you know, came and like left immediately. Uh, there were also some scheduling snafus, which just had to do with the course leader you know, changing hands at the last minute. Um, so people came in the wrong week or missed their session. We did get all 18 sections in. Um, it did take some rescheduling. And I don't think that was like an unwillingness of the instructors. I think that was just, you know, a lack of understanding the purpose of the activity and what students would be doing during this, this time. 
So the feedback we got, um, and I did send out, I made an assessment in Live Wizards that I sent out to faculty to give their students after the fact. The feedback we got was um, the most popular things that students learned about during the activity was the student technology available to them. So the computers, the printers, there's a group study room with a like a mediascape table, um, the study rooms themselves, and then also the librarian appointments and, and chat service. Uh, things that were confusing. So one of the questions on their assessment was about, you know, what are the library's operating hours on Sundays? A large percentage of students did not answer this question correctly. Um, taking a picture of the library hours was one of the things they had to do. Um, so what I learned was they were locating things, but not necessarily retaining the information uh, or what they learned. Um, the other thing, and again, this is a structural thing, we have a writing center annex located in the library. It's not under the library supervision. It's run by another external department. And what happened was some of the students got confused. So when they were being asked to find library hours, they found, you know, the hours for the tutoring, or um, they were asked to find out how to make an appointment with a librarian. They took a picture of how to make an appointment with the writing center, which unfortunately is not on the same platform. But overall, we did get really overwhelmingly positive feedback, both from faculty and from uh, students. Uh, the faculty, I think, were really impressed to see like this like really fun educational technology forward activity. Um, and and you know our campus, um, the faculty don't always use like these kind of interactive learning tools this way. Uh, so I think it was really um, cool for them to see like a different style of like teaching and learning in general. Uh, we also got positive feedback on that assessment from students. I think there was one student who said, you know, their suggestion for improving the activity was don't do it. But outside of that one student, we actually got very positive, like this activity was great, it was fun, don't change anything. Or the suggestions they did give were like very moderate, like about the Wi-Fi, for example. So for next year, um, a couple things I want to keep in mind is one, I think speaking with faculty directly instead of relying on the course leader to disseminate information. Um, before the semester start would help with some of those, you know, buy-in and scheduling uh, issues we ran into. Um, the assessment, we got very kind of scattered response. The faculty that actually shared the assessment, we got like a high rate of return. Um, I can tell from which assessments were given back that there were instructors who just didn't, didn't do it. Also, some of them didn't give it to them until weeks later. And of course, their scores kind of dipped. So I would um, probably build time into the session into just having them do it like right there in the class. Uh, also thinking about the hours, instead of just asking them to find objects, um, I'm trying to think of like a fun, creative way to have them answer a question. So like the library hours, for example, so they retain the information better instead of just merely doing identification. And then I wanna make sure we keep it fun because I do think this was fun. I saw some comments in the chat that some of you thought this activity was fun. So I want to make sure we don't you know, critique and perfect the fun out of the activity because this is supposed to be a fun experience. So that's everything I have for you. Um, I'll try to address any questions I saw in the chat, but you can feel free to email me. Um, if, one of, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, if you're playing this in real time, can you control approved photos before they appear on the Padlet? You can. Um, 
that does take more, you know, burden and inter intervention from you as the instructor. I deliberately chose not to do that because we were short staffed and um, I knew I was taking a risk, but it, it worked out okay. Um, would I be willing to share the template? Yes. If you want to email me at lbradley at SUNY Maritime, anybody who wants a template, I'll send it to you. Um, that's the answer. Oh, I did not know Padlet had its own QR code maker. That's good to know. Okay. Oh, so 18 sections. How many total students participated? Um, the number of sections, I think, uh, I think the freshmen, basically every first semester freshman participated. So I think that's about 400, 300 to 400. Sorry, I don't have those numbers on top of my head. And uh, yeah, okay. So I guess that's everything I have. Wait a minute.